I wanted to talk a little bit about Montgomery College in a very general way. So um, I wanted you to know that Montgomery College is the largest educational institution in the entire state of Maryland. Um, we serve about 54,000 students um, every single year. And what that means is that we serve more students than the University of Maryland. We serve more students than any other four-year institution in the state. Um, Montgomery College is the only community college that has a hospital, and it's uh, in the country. I'm sorry, Montgomery College is the only community college in the entire country that houses its own hospital. Well, it, it doesn't actually belong to us. We like to think that, but it actually belongs to um, Holy Cross. Um, Holy Cross Hospital is located on our Germantown campus of Montgomery College, and our students have the opportunity to go to Holy Cross Hospital, do their rotations there, and many of their and many of those students end up working at Holy Cross Hospital. So it's quite a bonus for us and for the industry, which, as you know, is in severe shortage of health professionals. So about our faculty, there really isn't enough that I can say about the faculty here at Montgomery College. Um, MC has over 500 full-time faculty members um, and they are all solely dedicated to teaching students. You won't see a single um, teaching assistant in any of our classrooms. They're all full-time faculty teaching. Um, the majority of our faculty hold doctoral degrees. Um, and you can't even teach at Montgomery College without having a master's degree or an industry um, equivalent. So they're very highly credentialed. Additionally, a number of Montgomery College faculty have won the Maryland Professor of the Year Award uh, by the Carnegie Foundation. As a matter of fact, Montgomery College won that award seven years in a row, a faculty member from Montgomery College. Yeah, the other schools don't really like that too much, but hey. Um, so I could go on and on and on and brag about the quality of Montgomery College, um, but you're not here today to, to, to listen to that. Um, you're here to learn about a bold new chapter in the history of Montgomery College, and perhaps a bold new chapter in your own personal history. This partnership between Montgomery County Public Schools and Montgomery College, um, you're going to learn today, that you're going to learn about today, uh, will offer you an outstanding degree uh, taught by outstanding faculty um, in an outstanding state of the art facilities at an outstanding cost. Wait till you hear about the cost. So, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, and I would like to turn the podium over to Dr. Genevieve Floyd, who is the Director of Partnerships at Montgomery County Public Schools. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm so glad that so many of you believed it was important to come tonight to hear about this option, this opportunity. Dr. Science has already shared with you some information about Montgomery College, one of the top community colleges in the nation. And we have been partnering with Montgomery College for decades. But I do believe that the early college program is one of the boldest initiatives that we've ever partnered to bring to our students, to bring to our families here in Montgomery County. And definitely one that students should take advantage of. We started this program two years ago, and our first class entered last year, and currently we have 35 seniors. It's a small class. But then we offered the opportunity to our 10th graders last year. They were sitting where you're sitting now, and we currently have 150 juniors across all three campuses working on their associate's degree, and it's just a delightful experience to see them and to see and to hear from them as well. In fact, you're going to hear from one of our seniors tonight about his experience. This is definitely an option you want to think carefully about. Going to college at such a young age requires a certain mindset, a certain maturity level. It's a wonderful opportunity, but not all students are geared out or ready to go to college full time. So it's important to know your student. It's important to know what they're capable of and what they can accomplish when it's an independent study opportunity. And I say that because I want to make sure, in just being transparent, that you are aware that this is a rigorous opportunity and students are treated like college students. There are a lot of supports 
that we have in place because they're still MCPS students and Montgomery College does go above and beyond to make sure that they are supported. But when the students are in classroom, in their classroom, the professors will not be calling the parents and the parents can't call the professors. It's a totally different, different experience from being in high school and I just want to make sure that you are aware of that. It is a great opportunity and in the brochure it talks about the benefits that are available to you, the benefits that are available to the students, savings of cost, it saves money, it saves time for you and for the students. But there are also um, a few items that I want you to be aware of. So when we offer this opportunity, Montgomery College has done a great job in partnering with our four-year institutions that are in the state so that students are able to transfer to one of those four-year universities and earn their baccalaureate degree in two years. However, if you've always dreamed that your child will go away for college, that they will not stay home for college, then I want to encourage you just to research the college opportunities that are out there. Because although the transfer to a university within the state is very smooth, if your child is going to California, if they're going to Harvard, if they're going to one of these other institutions, great institutions in the nation, the transfer policy differs. So I want to make sure you are aware of that, and if you do want them to go on, that you do your due diligence and researching those kinds of opportunities. It is our hope that all of our students will stay right here in Montgomery County, going from MCPS to MC to one of our state universities, and remaining here to be one of the productive citizens in terms of the workforce and contributing to this county. That is our hope, that is our dream. But we're here to support you in whatever way that we can. I was looking at the screen here, and you may notice that one of the degree options that's missing is the AAT degree. We offered for the last two years an AAT a T degree, an Associates of Arts and Teaching degree with science and, I'm sorry, secondary mathematics. So we're not going to offer that one again. We've offered it for two years and we have zero enrollment, so we realize that that's probably not one to offer. But I do want you to stay tuned because we're in conversations, our leaders with Montgomery College leaders, about offering engineering, about offering early childhood edu education, about expanding business opportunities to different campuses. So you're going to hear some more information about the degree options that are coming and that are expanding in mid-October when you get the opportunity to apply. So tonight, just listen to the degree options that are here, and Ms. Crawley, she's going to talk to you about the various components of early college so, so that you can make a very informed decision. We're going to be here this evening. We're going to stay until all of your questions are answered, and hopefully they will be, but if not, please feel free to contact us at any time. On your brochure, there's a list of individuals that you can contact, and we want to make sure that we are available to you. So again, we're going to be here until the um, session ends, and all of your questions are answered, but we will still be available to you after this evening. So I hope you're excited, and I hope you're ready to hear about the opportunities and the options that are available to you. At this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Crawley to please come forward. She's the director of our early college program here at Montgomery College. Again, thank you for your time, thank you for your presence, and thank you for your attention. Have a good evening. Good evening. As Dr. Floyd says, my name is Amy Crowley, and I am the Interim Director of Academic Initiatives, and I um, coordinate the Early College Program for Montgomery College. So we are prepared to provide you with a good deal of information about the Early College Programs and about the programs that are currently being offered at the Rockville campus. So um, the Early College Program is a partnership between Montgomery College, Montgomery County Public Schools, and it provides an opportunity for students from all 25 high schools to come to the college campus and complete their high school graduation requirements while at the same time pursuing an associate's degree at Montgomery College. Students will take college classes to fulfill their MCPS high school diploma requirements 
while also fulfilling their college requirements. So some of the classes that they take will only be uh, fulfilling college degree requirements, while other classes that students take will fulfill both the diploma requirement for MCPS as well as the college degree. Students in their first year in these programs are cohorted together, which means they're taking their classes together. Uh, we've been very fortunate. The departments have been um, extremely gracious with um, giving us classes at wonderful times. So those of you who've had the experience of going to college know that having an 8 o'clock class, especially for students who are coming from all over the county, is not the ideal situation. So most of the time our classes are not starting until 9 o'clock in the morning. We're generally able to do the schedules so that the students have a slight break, but their classes fall one after the other so that they're done by early afternoon. Some days they're done by noon. Um, sometimes they may have a science lab and they may not be done until 1.30. And the nice thing about that is that allows the students an opportunity to go back to their home high schools and participate in extracurricular activities, including athletic teams. So the students are taking all of their classes on the college campus. They are not going back to their high school. So they will spend 11th and 12th grade year on the MC campus taking college classes. Now again, as I said, students still have the opportunity to participate in homecoming, prom. Um, coming up in the near future is the PSAT day. So students will go back to their home high school and do that. In the spring, they'll get to do the free SAT. So they have all of the options that other MCPS students have, but they're taking all of their classes here on the college campus. So these degrees that we're, we've decided to, to deliver in this program, the reason why they were selected by MCPS and the college is because they're areas where there, there are jobs. So our hope is that we are educating a workforce then to stay in Montgomery County, to stay in Maryland, and in areas where there are jobs available for our students. So that the admissions requirements and assumptions. So we are hoping that students who apply to this program have fulfilled, if not all, a good number of their service learning credits. Uh, we want students in ninth and 10th grade to complete classes, all their pathway classes, including PE. PE in particular is a very important one. We like to see you completing health and your technology credit, but we can work around that. Students must earn grades of C or higher in all of their college classes. Um, and the reason for that, or a number of reasons, first of all, four-year institutions often will not take a grade of D. Second, Cs are what we call prerequisites. It's a requirement to take the next class in a sequence. It shows that you've mastered the material in the class. And third, Going forward, when the students leave Montgomery College and are applying for uh, financial aid, students have to have made academic progress. And so the C's are making academic progress. So a number of reasons. And we hold students to that, receiving the C's. Think of it as them having a scholarship and they have to get grades of C. We work with the students to research transfer opportunities. So right now, Ms. Matthews, and you'll meet her later on, I don't think she's in here right now, and I want to introduce her, um, is working with the second year students, and they're doing early decision, most of them, on their applications. But I would have to say, if your child has their heart set on attending one particular institution, this is the time to contact that institution and say and ask them, would you accept credits that my child has earned towards high school as well as college? Um, there are, the majority of institutions will take transfer credits that students earn while they're in high school. But I'm going to be completely honest, there are a number of schools um, that will not take credits. These are schools like Harvard, um, Johns Hopkins, those type of schools. There are other schools who will accept the credits that are not applied to the high school diploma. So they're not used doubly. So again, 
you need to think about that. Um, if you have your heart set on a certain school right now, you know it. Check with that school right now to find out if they will take credits that are earned, college credits, while you're in high school. And right now, I would like to introduce the interim dean of mathematics and statistics for Montgomery College, Dr. Milton Nash. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so my name is Milton Nash. I am the interim dean of mathematics, statistics, and data science here at Montgomery College. And I'm going to start with a confession. You might have already gathered this. I'm a mathematician. <laughs> and my job here tonight is to convince you that your child should also be a mathematician. <laughs> And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin by uh, playing a game. And so the way this is going to work is I am going to give you a list of people, and you are going to tell me what they all have in common. OK? Got that really simple game. And I'm just going to read this out. I don't have a slide. Uh, so the first person on this list is named Robert Stewart. Uh, Robert Stewart is a NASA, or at least he was a NASA astronaut. Actually, he flew several space shuttle missions in the 80s. Any, anybody ever hear about the space shuttle? Maybe a few people. Okay, he was an astronaut. Uh, another another fellow is named Michael Weiss. Uh, he is an agricultural economist working at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. All right, that's interesting. Uh, Amanda Quarren. Amanda is a project manager at the London-based International Accounting Standards Board. Okay, next person on the list, Fred Preston, who is a systems engineer working at Lucent Technologies. A lot of diversity, I mean, it seems kind of random. Some of you may have guessed the answer, but humor me, let's play along. But I mean, but what, what you should be getting from this is that, hmm, that's an interesting assortment of people and an interesting assortment of jobs. I've got a few more. Uh, Diane Purcell, who is a financial analyst at a company called KeyCorp. And then there's Nancy Roderer, who is the director of the Harvey Cushing John Hay Whitney Medical Library at Yale University. That's an interesting job on an Ivy League campus. And then I have uh, Mr. Edward Rothstein, who is, a, who, who is written for the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, and who is a cultural critic at large. In fact, he writes about music. Imagine that. Uh, I also have uh, Jane Turnbull, who is Assistant Vice President of the Credit Reporting Agency, Equifax. How many people have heard of Equifax? If you care about your credit score, you've heard of Equifax, right? And last, I'll give you Elizabeth Sweet, who is a statistician at the Census Bureau. Okay, interesting assortment of people. So what do all those people have in common? Anybody guess yet? They're, they're all math majors. Every last single one of them got a bachelor's degree in mathematics. And, and here you see an assortment of different areas that people pursue when, when they start off as math majors. And a, one second, I need to figure out how to manipulate the slides here. A very simple internet search easily reveals career opportunities, for, career opportunities for math majors, along with salaries that they can hope to earn. And you might ask, well, what do all these professions have in common? And, and by the way, if you look at some of those salaries, there, there are a number of reasons to be a math major up there. I don't know, if you, if you, see, if you see the dollar signs and all the commas, all right, those are good reasons to be math majors. So what do, what do all these professions have in common? What is at the root? So I will tell you, the study of mathematics provides excellent training on how to think rigorously and analytically. 
high-level analytical skills, strong problem-solving skills, strong quantitative skills, these are all in great demand across many professions. And people who hire at companies like, like I just mentioned, they look at you and they see a math major and they assume that you have those skills. Right? Uh, and so you might ask, what are the specific benefits of the early college math program at Montgomery College? And how will we prepare uh, your student to take on some of these interesting and exciting careers? That's a good question. First answer to the question is our courses, our math courses are widely transferable. And, and what do I mean by that? That means uh, if you take a calculus course here, and that student decides to go on to another institution, it will be accepted as a calculus course at almost any other institution across the country. A calculus course is a calculus course. And I can tell you from my experience, I've actually worked at a number of other institutions of higher learning. Uh, I've worked at the community college level. I've also worked at four-year institutions where the primary focus is research. And I've, I've seen a wide variety of students, but I can tell you this, the calculus course that I taught at those other places is exactly the same calculus course that I teach here, right? The, the rigor, the expectations on students is exactly the same as they would be getting at any other place where I have taught in my career. So they will be getting a rigorous college experience in that cal calculus class. But, Here's something extra that they will get as a student here at Montgomery College. They will get small class sizes with professors whose primary goal is teaching. <coughs> whose primary goal is teaching. I mean, at other institutions. Anybody ever hear of a weed out course? <laughs> anybody ever hear that term, weed out course? If you've ever been a college student, uh, so a weed out course is, you know, it, you know, typically, you know, it's an entry level, introductory course, at a, you know, at a, uh, you know, at, at, a, at a lot of institutions, and I, I will not name them, but the, the idea is they generally have high enrollment and then they have high failure rates, right? Uh, and so at Montgomery College, we don't have weed out courses. Right? Our objective in all of our courses is to give our students the best support that we can provide for them. That, that doesn't mean nobody fails, but that means that our objective is that everyone does well, that everyone thrives in our classes. So they will be taking rigorous college level courses in a nurturing environment. That is the thing that we can provide that maybe they won't get elsewhere. Um, and besides that, I will also mention that we have excellent faculty with very diverse experiences coming from institutions all across the country. Okay? Uh, you know, actually, one, one career that I'd like to mention up that that's not up there, uh, anybody up here, the NSA? The National Security Agency, right? So the, National, the NSA is the number one employer of mathematicians in the entire country. Maybe the number one employer of mathematicians in the, number, in, in the entire world. I, mean, I don't know the exact number, that's classified. <laughs> but, but I have heard it's somewhere in the order of 600. So 600, math, 600 people trained in advanced mathematics working at the NSA alone. Again, those problem solving skills, uh, that background in data analytics, that, that, that background, and that strong, those strong quantitative and problem solving skills. And so you might be curious, okay, that's nice, where have some of uh, Montgomery College, oops, excuse me, where have some of our students uh, gone? And so here you will see a short list of schools that uh, Montgomery College math majors have gone on to attend. And I can tell you about a few of them. So we had one uh, young lady who was a 
uh, one of our one of our best mathematics students, who took honors courses with uh, with us. And after she graduated, she was accepted as a junior at Smith College. Uh, so Smith College is one of those small liberal arts colleges in, in Massachusetts, right? And to, to say that she was accepted as a junior meant that her credits as a math major here were accepted, right? They transferred to that to that school in Massachusetts. And after she completed her bachelor's degree in mathematics, she went on to work internationally for a year, and then she began uh, uh, a PhD program in mathematics at Georgetown University. So that student is now at Georgetown University as we speak in a PhD program. Uh, we had a student uh, who went on to Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Now, I will be honest, I will have a sh sh short disclaimer. That student was technically not an engineering major here at Montgomery College. However, he did take all of our mathematics courses. And, and, if you, and it, you might be interested to know that he was so interested in mathematics that he a actually did research and presented at a conference at the Mathematical Association of America, for, for the Mathematical Association of America. And he went on to MIT as a double major in mathematics and engineering, uh, where he got his bachelor's degree. Okay? A, a lot of our students go to the University of, of Maryland, College Park. Uh, and I'll tell you about a few of those. So one of one student who was a student of mine actually started here as a math major. In fact, he, he I was uh, one thing that I did for a number of years. I was the faculty advisor to the math club, right? And we did you know we did interesting activities. We you know we did math tournaments. We you know we we went to uh, uh, did field trips and then you know, all kinds of interesting enrichment activities like that. Uh, this young man was the president of the math club went on after to graduate with a mathematics degree from Montgomery College, transferred to the University of Maryland College Park, double majored in physics and mathematics, got a published paper within one year of leaving us, graduated from College Park, and he now works at a little known company called Google <laughs> as a programmer. Anybody ever hear of Google? How many people have heard of Google? <laughs> All right. And I'll tell you one more story, one more story. This is one of my favorite stories. So another of one of my students actually, actually another member of the math club, completed a math degree here, transferred to College Park as a major in chemical engineering. Uh, after obtaining a BS degree, she is now a PhD student in chemical engineering and material science at the University of Minnesota. So that just gives you a, a small sample of all the options that are available to students with that background and that training in high-level mathematics. And, and I, hope it, I, I hope I've done something of a good job of explaining it to you why it's a good, why it's a good idea for your child, you know, if they're so inclined, uh, to be a math major at Montgomery College. And uh, with that, I will introduce uh, the next speaker, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Catherine Davis, uh, who is the Dean of, uh, sorry, business. <laughs> Good evening. Yes, my name is Katherine Davis, and I am the Dean over Business Accounting, Economics, Hospitality Management, Computer Applications, and Paralegal Services. <laughs> that's why I expanded, um, and that's fine. Um, I have to use the acronym, otherwise I forget one of them. Um, but uh, let me start with a quick question. Um, high school students. How many of y'all are interested in entrepreneurship? All right. Um, in the black t-shirt, what do you want to do? <laughs> OK. Um, perhaps restaurant, clothing, music, um, a widget of some sort? Yes. A tech company. Awesome. OK. Who else has a business idea? Yes. Fashion business, awesome, yeah. 
And so a lot of our students today, thank you very much, um, a lot of our students today are very interested in entrepreneurship regardless of um, the discipline that they pursue. And so it might be math, but also what do, how do I turn that into my own company, or chemistry, or uh, computer applications? And so with the business administration program, we impart the knowledge on our students that will give them insight into things, topics like economics, statistics, accounting, uh, business management, and marketing. And so, just like with the math program, these classes successfully articulate to the University of Maryland and many other popular destinations. I'll get to some of those in just a moment. Some experiences that students in the early college program end up enjoying with business are field trips to area businesses. Because high schoolers, you know what it is to study content in a textbook, but it's something totally different to see the way a business is doing it themselves. And so it brings the content to life. And these are the kinds of enriching activities that we are providing in our business administration early college program. We're also having guest speakers come to campus specifically for the early college program. In fact, next week, we'll have the president of the Rockville Chamber and the Rock Rockville Economic Development Organization come and speak with just the early college business students. And so these are, this is a special um, cohort and we really want to create additional enrichment activities specifically for them. And so, the list here identifies some of the common um, transfer destinations of our students, as well as some of the um, premier institutions like um, Georgetown. Um, we have students there studying finance and economics and have some exciting finance initiatives coming online that next year's student, incoming students will be able to leverage. And so we will be here after the program to address any questions that you might have about it. Um, just as Dr. Nash um, explained, we have amazing faculty across the enti entire college and will nurture the students and help them find success in the program and in the area of the discipline that speaks loudest to them. So thank you for coming tonight and uh, we'll welcome you uh, this evening as well as next fall. So cost of the program. If you came to Montgomery College at a high school and paid for the 60 credits, let's say for an AA in business, based on today's prices, tuition and fees, and you add it in for textbooks, the program would cost you $12,700. Doing this program, MC and MCPS are covering the cost of the tuition, and MCPS is covering the cost of the textbooks, which totals $9,920. So that difference that's left that is not paid by MC or MCPS or what we call student fees and that is $2,724. So that's spread over the two years, and it would average per semester. I'm trying to read this. Kind of small, $681. It just kind of gives you an idea how much this program would cost based on this year's tuition and fees, $681. If your student is eligible for free and reduced meals, 
MCPS will also cover the cost of the fees, so there is zero cost to those students. So it's a wonderful opportunity for students to get their first two years of college at a maximum of $2,724 based on this year's price. Um, yeah. So early college students are not eligible for um, federal financial aid because the program is being supported. If you have a Maryland 529 college savings plan, you can use that savings plan to pay for the fees that I mentioned. Um, there is also a Maryland high school grant that students can, who have financial need can, can apply for and it's done on a case by case basis. Transportation for this program, this is something that's very important. The, the nice thing about the Rockville campus, it is centrally located in the middle, middle of the county, but you have to be thinking about how you're gonna be getting to campus. Now, Montgomery College students have access to the ride-on bus system um, with their student ID and they can use that and there's also a shuttle bus so what we've had happen this year is we have students who take the shuttle bus from Germantown down to the Rockville campus it's it's an express bus uh, people do you know all different things sometimes parents drop their um, students off on the way to work but you've got to think about transportation you can look at the ride on bus routes to see what's the closest to your your home but something to take into consideration um, I'm just I'm going to finish up about the money because I see our speaker is here but I want to finish up the section so what we did here we kind of took a look at trying to compare apples to apples somewhat Based on this year's tuition and fees to University of Maryland College Park, if you were to graduate from high school and go to College Park for four years and pay for the tuition and textbooks, the cost for four years would be $47,116. That's not housing, it's not the meal plan, that's just tuition and fees. If a student graduated from MCPS and came to MC for two years, and then went to University of Maryland College Park, you would have the two years that I referenced before, which is the 12,700 plus half of the four year tuition at College Park. So that would be $36,000 and change. Students who do the early college program, they would get a four year degree for $26,282, a savings of over $20,000. So it really kind of shows you what it would cost you to go to College Park as opposed to going directly after high school graduation to MC, transferring to College Park, and then finally, what it costs to do a bachelor's degree if you're in the early college program. And I think with that, I am going to take a break here because we've got a great speaker for you. Um, one of our um, second year students in the mathematics program is going to speak to you about his experience in the early college program. Ms. Raffi, want to come up? And his picture, by the way, is the one that's on the brochure that you got. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? All right, awesome. All right. Um, wow, it's a packed crowd. It's nice. So, if I recall correctly, uh, I was here in the March of in March of 2018, and I was sitting right there in that corner. And I had come after a long day at school. Uh, I was SGA vice president, and it was just a really long meeting, right? And I sat there, and my mom basically persuaded me to come. Right, a lot of you kids are probably here because your mom was like, you gotta come. <laughs> I'm right. So essentially, yeah, that was the same case for me. And I was out here and um, I was not feeling the mood. And I heard Dr. Crowley speak and she was talking about saving money, saving time. I like both of those things, so I start, my ears perked up a little. And she started talking about finishing a, an associate's degree simultaneously 
with the last two years of high school. And I thought in my head, oh wait, that's like skipping two grades. <laughs> that sounds too good to be true. All right, and you know what that also sounds like? That sounds like earning 60 credits, 60 college credits during high school. Now, what does that mean about your weighted GPA? Wait, hold on, who's calling? It's common sense. Common sense is saying, uh, <laughs> common sense is saying, common sense is saying that your weighted GPA will be higher than anyone in the entire state. Wow. The entire state. And you know why? It is physically impossible to earn 60 credits while you're in high school, except for if you're in the early college program. Except for, except for when you're in the early college program. And that's what makes this program so great. And that's just one reason out of like five that I have, all right? And many more, actually. So our weighted GPAs, right, will be phenomenally high. As a matter of fact, I have accumulated, as of right now, about 69 credits. <laughs> My older brother, he took 13 APs at Magruder High School. He got about 40 something, and he died through his classes. And I'm here, and I've already earned 69. I haven't even graduated yet. <laughs> I'll finish with 84. That's basically, I'm gonna transfer as a junior, uh, hopefully, God willing, at University of Maryland. That's tough, I like that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> now, if you, if you told me I'd be standing here speaking March of 2018, I would have said, why would I even want to leave my high school? I was vice president, I was on the JV basketball team, I was, I was already playing basically for varsity, and I had all the friends I wanted. Why would I leave all that and come to college where I have no friends, I'm five years younger than everyone, I'm 16. So I'm like literally younger than everyone I'm around. Yeah, 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 everyone's like, you're 16? <laughs> yeah, I'm 16, I'm 16. So yeah, essentially, why would I leave all that behind? And the reason is course rigor. The reason is course rigor. Because you cannot take the classes you can take here in high school. Which high school offers organic chemistry in one year? It offers discrete mathematics, multivariable calculus, differential equations, linear algebra, all of senior year? Because I'm taking that. My friends are taking that. There's no high school that can do that for you. But this place can. And even if you don't want to take all those things, you still have the opportunity to broaden your horizons and learn all that you want to learn. You can take all kinds of literature classes, things that people in high school can't even imagine. You can take business writing here. Who taught business writing in high school? <laughs> but like, you can take that here as a young kid. And beyond just coursework and weighted GPAs, your opportunities here are endless in terms of internships, in terms of the job market. In high school, who thinks about the job market? You're basically lifeguarding if you're a guy, or you're working at the vet if you're a girl. That you're basically very really limited. But out here, you can do anything. And you're like, hey, Sophia Lowe, what's, what's your example? What are you doing? Guess what? I landed my first job here. I'm working at NIST. Wow. I'm 16. And you know what? They didn't look at me. You know what they looked at? They looked at my credentials, my education, my ability to learn, my learning curve. And that's why this program will help you attain that learning curve that everyone in the job market wants. Now, I've talked about weighted GPAs, all right? And I've talked about uh, the ability to have internships and course rigor. Now, when you add up those three things, what do you get? You get an Ivy caliber student. Colleges look at your GPA and they're like, wow, this guy's taking phenomenal coursework. He's taken so many nice classes. He's had the best internships. We have to bring him to our college. And sure, it's granted, they won't take your credits. Like, Johns Hopkins will take like 12 out of your 60 credits. But you're going to Johns Hopkins, though. Like, and Harvard, they might not take your credits, but you're still going to Harvard. You're getting a Harvard quality education. So I'm telling you, my cohort, as of right now, we send about 40 kids. About 10 of us are Ivy caliber. We're ready to go. And 10 out of 40, that's better than any proportion in any high school MCPS. So we eventually, we, you become an elite level student. Even if you enter the program as a little bit of a straggler, you don't really enjoy school, you pick up the pace. Because in college, you learn that efficiency is the name of the game. 
You become the best student that you can ever be and you go to the best places you can ever go to. Now after you've heard all this about me, you're probably asking, hey Sophila, how do you do, how do, you do all this? And you know what I did? Essentially when I was in March 2018, right? And my mom asked me, you want to join early college? I took a deep breath, I went And I shadow boxed for like three seconds, I was like And then I, I looked at my mom and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'll, I'll, let's see what we can do. And that's where I am today. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Yeah, I just said I need to talk to him because he asked me to write one of his letters of recommendation. So he's applying to Harvard, Georgia Tech, Maryland, Columbia, and Johns Hopkins. So pretty good, pretty good schools. Just kind of getting back, we talked about the, the financial aspect. Just as, this is kind of a, a graphic just to show you time to completion. Um, the traditional path, going to high school for four years and going to college for four years, represented the yellow and the blue boxes. So doing the early college program, you've got your ninth and 10th grade year in yellow. The green is the overlap where you're doing 11th and 12th grade, but you're doing the first two years of college. The blue boxes represent year three and four of your bachelor's degree. And then the final golden box is master's degree. So in the same amount of time, that you get a bachelor's degree, you can have a master's degree if you so choose to do that for the early college program. So I just want to talk a little bit about general education requirements. So most colleges and universities require what we call general education classes. They're foundational classes. They're things like English, humanities, social science, arts classes, science. and. Um, all these degree programs have major requirement classes, so for the mathematics program, for the business. But besides from that, you're also getting these foundational classes that will prepare you for the future so that you can have, uh, attain your personal and professional goals as well. So again, as I mentioned, some of the classes they'll take. And the general education classes that you complete in this program are all accepted by schools in the university system in Maryland and accepted at most or many institutions, four-year institutions in the country. So how do we do this all? Well, again, um, Dr. Nash mentioned small class size. The average size is 24. I mean, if you go to College Park, I went to College Park, 300, 400 in the lecture halls and that type of thing. Anybody has had that experience. Our classes are small. Our faculty get to know their students. They know them by name. Um, so what we're doing is we are going to make sure that you have access to the resources and services at the college. We have writing centers, we have math centers. The students right now in their second year of um, mathematics program have access to um, tutoring on Friday for chemistry. There are special hours there. Um, in addition to that, um, we bring the students in the summer so they become familiar with the campus and the different opportunities at the college. We make sure that you're aware of your graduation requirements and we're, while we're doing this, we're working with your home high school counselors to ensure that you are completing your high school requirements while at the same time doing your college requirements. And at this time, I actually want to introduce Aaron Matthews. We you raise your hand. Aaron is the Rockville Campus Early College Coordinator. So if you are selected to do a program here on this Rockville Campus, Aaron would be the person here at the college that you'd be working with. So as far as academic support, if you really seriously think that you want to do this program, we strongly suggest that you log on to Khan Academy, and I believe you can access through the MCPS website. Khan Academy for SAT. Right. And start the process of getting prepared for the college's assessment tests. Never too early for that. 
Um, we have, again, the Ackerman Math Center, I, I mentioned that. They have tutoring support. They lend out calculators for students. They have review sessions. And there are lots of computer labs at the college. The business program twice a week has a two-hour program with mentoring and tutoring support. And that's where Dr. Davis spoke about the speaker coming in. So it's dedicated time outside the classroom just to help the business students. And I mentioned Ms. Matthews. I mean, she's there to connect students with resources. Um, we do progress report parents, like week three. We're checking up on students on a regular basis to make sure that their grades are not slipping and then see what we can do to support them. And again, the writing center. One thing I didn't was in there, I didn't mention is embedded coaching. We have a program um, achieving the Promise Academy, and they provide us with coaches in our English classes, our math classes, and science. So that person has the syllabus for the class, is following what's going on, and besides from the faculty's office hours, the students can get together um, as, as a study group with the embedded coach. So there are a lot of things we're doing to support the students. Um, I want to talk for a minute about disability support services. So our DSS office provides accommodation supports to students who are qualified with documented learning disabilities or other disabilities. The services that students receive in MCPS for IEPs or 504s um, do not convey to the college. We're under different federal legislation. Therefore, students who are accepted to this program need to apply for services through the DSS office. And we ask you to do that at least a month before class starts so they can get services in place. And we have there the phone number for the Rockville DSS office. So as long as everybody understands that, um, we cannot stress that enough. If you do this program, apply for the services. You may decide that you don't want to use them, but we really urge you to apply for services if you're getting them right now from MCPS. And now I would like to introduce Mr. Michael Sullivan from MCPS, and he is going to take you through the application process and the decision process. So after all that, you're probably wondering, what do we do next? How do I get in? What do I have to do? That's what this is about. So the first thing you're going to do is complete the common application. This is going to be coming out on the MCPS website in mid-October. Uh, that will be found on, on the website. We actually have a link to it on the back of your agenda. So you can find where to get more information so you don't have to write down the, the big long um, uh, URL for the website. After that, in December, eligible and non-eligible students will be informed of their status. That'll be in December. Coming in January, students will complete the admit Montgomery College application and the uh, MCPS early college form. That's the thing that says you're actually going to do this. Um, and that'll be by January 3rd. Then you'll be taking that AccuPlacer. And that's where we suggest that if you're interested in this program, you start looking at the Khan Academy for SAT and start working in that program so that you can uh, score well on the AccuPlacer to assess into the courses in the early college program. By mid-April, students will be informed of their eligibility to continue in the program to the summer program, and then the summer program will start. Keep in mind those dates at the bottom for the mandatory summer session. Those happen in August. And there we go. So after this, we're going to have opportunities to answer questions at the microphones. But if after all this, and after you go home and you look at the websites from both Montgomery College and MCPS where we have a lot more detailed information and it digests and it marinates and you still have questions, you also have 
us as resources. So on the back of your agenda, you have the resources. So feel free to email us, ask us questions to help you make that decision by November 1st. And as well, up here are the links that you also found on your agenda. Um, a couple of things that I sk skipped over that I want to remind people about. The summer program is mandatory. I can tell you the dates right now. July the 6th through July the 31st. The programs generally run in the morning, so that is a requirement to do this program. And we do various things through that program, so that is a requirement. 